In number one, it asks us which of the following are right triangles. And in order to determine if something is a right triangle, we just need to determine if um, they work in the Pythagorean theorem converse. So we plug them into Pythagorean theorem, see if both sides equal. So C squared needs to equal A squared and B squared added together. C is always the longer of the three lengths or the longest of the three lengths. So we see these three lengths. Um, so we'll square them all. So six squared is 36, eight, nine squared is 81, and 12 squared is 144. And when we do 36 plus 81, that does not equal 144. So this is not a right triangle. In part B, eight squared is 64. 10 squared is 100, 13 squared is 169. So that's our C value squared. Um, and 64 plus 100 does not equal 169. So this is not a right triangle. In part C, nine squared is 81, 12 squared is 144, and 15 squared is 225. 81 plus 144 is 225, so these are equal to each other, so this one is a right triangle. In part D, 10 squared is 100, 13 squared is 169, and 17 squared is 289. 100 plus 169 is not equal to 289, so this is not a right triangle. Number two, in, a right, in right triangle ABC, a square is drawn on each of its sides and altitude CD is drawn to the hypotenuse of AB from this right triangle and extended to the opposite side of the square. So the altitude is completely extended here. Um, in class, we discussed Elena's observation that A squared equals X times C. And then um, Diego's observation that B squared equals Y times C. My observes that these statements can be thought of as claims about the area of the rectangles. <clears throat> so which rectangle has the same area as B, C, H, G? So if we're saying um, this little triangle here, let me um, get some color here to help us look at it. So this is side length is A. So then this square here has side lengths of a so all the side lengths are a so then this area would be a squared a times a and then we see that elena said that a squared is equal to x times c so which rectangle is that and so we see here's an x and then here's side length c so this rectangle's area would be um x c so the area of this would be x times c, which is what Elena is saying is equal to a squared. So these two blue rectangles would have the same area. So b, e, k, d for this one. And then um, what about the other rectangle? So what about equal to the rectangle a, c, i, j? So this orange triangle, or this orange rectangle is this one. So which of the other rectangles has the same area as that one? And so the area of this one, each of these sides are Bs. So the area of this is going to be B squared. And then we remember that Diego said that B squared equals Y times C. And so Y times C, here's Y. And then remember that this length is C. We see it right here. So this rectangle here is equal to, the area is equal to y times c. So then we're saying that b squared is equal to y times c. So these two rectangles would have the same area. So a, d, k, f. Number three, Andre says that he can find the length of the third side in triangle ABC, and he says that it is five units. So he's saying he can figure this out as five units. My disagrees, and she thinks that the length of the segment is unknown. So do you agree with either of them and explain your reasoning? All right, so um, it would be five units 
if we knew that this was a right angle. Okay, we need to know that this is a 90 degree angle and without that, then this is an unknown segment. So when we don't know that it's 90 degrees, then we can't do anything um, else. If this were a 90 degree angle, then we would be able to do Pythagorean theorem. Without the 90 degree angle, we can't do anything. So agree with my. Number four, in a right triangle ABC, the altitude CD is drawn to the hypotenuse. Um, find two triangles that must be similar to triangle ABC. So here's triangle ABC. So A to B to C. And remember that that order matters. So when we did this triangle here, okay, we went from A to B, which is the hypotenuse, and then B to C, which is the long leg, and then we went to the short leg. So I'm just going to leave it like this so we remember the order that we're going in. So A to B to C. So we need to follow the hypotenuse to the long leg in our letter orders. So we want to come up with two triangles that are similar to ABC. I'm actually going to delete this hypotenuse out of here. All right, so these two little triangles are going to be similar to the larger one. And again, we just have to follow hypotenuse to long leg. So in this little triangle over here, if I go hypotenuse to long leg, the order of those letters is A, C, D. So triangle A, C, D is similar to A, B, C. And then if we do it again in this kind of medium sized triangle over here, we need the hypotenuse to the long leg. So the letter of those orders are C, B, D. So then triangle CBD is also similar to triangle ABC. Number five, in right triangle ABC, the altitude CD is the altitude, and it has a length of six, so we can see that. And then we also know that AD is 12. What is the length of BD? So we want to find this segment here. So we know... Um, that the hypotenuse kind of pieces here split up are proportional with the altitude. So we can take 12 over 6. So 12 over 6 is going to be equal to 6 over this missing piece here of BD. And then we'll be able to cross multiply. So if we multiply BD up, we get 12 times BD equals 6 times 6, which is 36. And then we will divide both sides by 12. And we end up with BD is equal to 3. Number 6, BC and DE are both vertical. So when we have two vertical lines, we know that that means that they're parallel which also splits these sides up proportionally and gives us two similar triangles. What is the length of BD? So now we just want this little side piece here. And we don't have these other side pieces over here. So we're going to have to use the um, similar triangles to figure this out. And so if we take a look at this little green triangle, and then we compare that to this um, larger triangle here. So this one will be able to find the length of segment AD, and then that will help us get to um, BC. So we've got this two is this side and the five. So we'll compare those with scale factor. So the scale factor is five divided by two or 2.5. So we multiply by 2.5 to get to that larger side. So we'll do that with this one to get AD. So we'll take three times 2.5 and that's gonna give us 7.5 for AD. Then to get this little missing piece here, so all we want is from B to D. So we're gonna take 7.5 minus the three that we've already used here and we'll get 4.5 for segment BD. Number seven, 
in this right triangle, we see that AC is 5 and BC is 12. And then a new triangle is formed by connecting the midpoints. So these are the midpoints. Let's figure out the area of triangle ABC. So ABC is this larger triangle. And remember to figure out the area, we do base times height divided by 2. So we'll do 5 times 12 divided by 2. And 5 times 12 is 60 divided by 2 is 30 units squared. Then we'll figure out the area of triangle DEC. So DEC is this little triangle here formed by the midpoints. So we know with this one that this side is half of AC. So this is 2.5 and this one is half of 12. So this one is 6. So we will do 2.5 times 6 divided by 2 and we get 7.5 units squared for that triangle. Now this last question says, does the scale factor for the side lengths apply to the area as well? So let's look at the side length factor. Okay, so the side factor is comparing a new length. So let's compare 2.5 to the original length of 5. And so we know that that equals down to a decimal of 0.5 or a fraction of one half. So there's our side scale factor. Then let's look at our area factor and see if it's the same. So our area will again take the new area of 7.5 and compare that to the original area of 30. And we see that this divides down to a decimal of 0.25 or a fraction of one fourth. And we see that those are not equal. So one half does not equal one fourth. So the side and area factors are not equal or they do not apply. Number eight, quadrilaterals P and Q are similar. What is the scale factor that takes Q to P? Okay, so what takes Q to P? So our new shape is P. So we'll take a measurement in P divided by the original in Q and we get a scale factor of four fifths. Let's say you had compared these ones because you can do that as well. And then you would have just gotten two divided by 2.5. You wouldn't see that here. Um, you wouldn't see that exact fraction. So you could just try again with a different set um, or you could divide this down and do two divided by 2.5 and get 0 0.08 and then divide all of these and for this one, you'd have gotten 0 0.04 or 0 0.6, and then you would have gotten to 0 0.8 here and 1.25 here, and that would have helped you to have seen C as well. Number nine, Priya is trying to determine if triangle ADC, okay, so this one down here, um, is congruent to CBA, so this one up here. She knows that segments A, B, and D, C are congruent. So A, B is congruent to D, C. She also knows that angle D, C, A, so this angle here, is congruent to angle B, A, C, this angle here. Does she have enough information to determine that the triangles are congruent? Explain your reasoning. So that's the stuff that she was given. Priya also knows um, that... So she also knows that AC is congruent to CA. So AC kind of in this bottom seg bottom triangle and CA in this top triangle are congruent um, because they are the same segment. Which is the reflexive property. Um, and then this gives her enough information. Okay, so then she knows the triangles are congruent. Um, so she knows triangle um, ADC is congruent to triangle CBA by side angle side um, congruence theorem. So if you just kind of looked at, um, if we took, 
I'm just going to take this triangle up here and I'm just going to draw on what I know. So I had this side to another one, this angle to the other one, and then this side. So if I pull this off of here, I see that we have two sides and then the angle between them. So that's where you get this side angle side congruence theorem.